All right, now let's cook something fun here. This is osobuco, one of my favorite dishes. Now, normally I would make this with four uh, lamb shanks, veal shanks, or um, beef shanks. But today I'm only making two because there's only gonna be two of us eating. The pot easily holds four. Now inside the Vita clay, there is this clay pot insert. And that's what we're cooking in, is an insulated clay insert with air going around it to heat it slowly yet rapidly. So first we just put in our two shanks. And you can hear the sizzle because I've already warmed up the cooker. This is one of the unusual things about this cooker. You can have it on while it's open. Now you can't do that with a pressure cooker. Now the recipe is simple. By the way, I learned how to use a can opener properly recently. And look, have. put your can opener down sideways when you use it. It's a can of diced tomatoes. Perfect. Then, a cup of white wine. Then, chopped garlic. Now, there's a lot of ways to buy garlic. This is the way that I buy it now. I used to peel and chop and torture myself with garlic, and it's just frankly easier. There, I peeled off the lid. That's all the peeling I'm going to do. I have a heaping teaspoon of garlic in there. Go around and this is how I buy my herbs now. You can get these in the produce department. I used to be a grocer and fresh herbs go bad so fast in my fridge. I've just learned to buy the Italian herbs in the tube or you'll see me use a lot in this series um, herbs that I buy at, at Cost Plus. So uh, I use a lot of herbs de Provence. Taught to me by my friend, Chef Jacques Boireau. A little sea salt, a little pepper. Okay, and then chopped celery stock. One small chopped onion and one carrot chopped. Hey, look, I got a nub in there. Perfect, put the lid on. Now, the cooker was probably originally designed to be a rice cooker, but I found it so versatile, I literally use it for almost everything. This is set to soup. For two hours, we close the lid and simply hit start, and we're off and running. All right, now to plate this up, first I've uh, just got a little quick cook polenta. So you actually could have done this, I could have done this in the pot, but I like to cook my polenta just so it's clean and prettier, so it's nice and golden. Maybe put a little butter on that later, but let's take a look at our osabuco. And this little hook comes with your Vita clay. All right, oh, look at this baby. Here, I'm gonna tip this up so you can see this. Now, I want you to know there wasn't any trickery or treachery in what we did. This is exactly as you saw it go into the pot, right? You can see all those oils and juices and flavors that have cooked off. I might even reserve those bones later, come back and make bone broth with them. Oh, baby. See, so you gotta be careful taking this out now because it will want to fall off the bone. Oh, and it does. It wants to come off the bone. Look at that. Oh, yum. Look at this one. Ah, beautiful and tender. See that meat coming right off the bone? Look at that. It's just coming right apart. Oh, but you can't stop there because there's a lot of good stuff inside the bowl. Look at that nonsense. Oh, baby, that is going to be delicious. I'm gonna use the spoon here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try this in a second because I don't care. That's why I cooked it was to eat it, right? So let's uh, make it a little pretty for our guests. Now, if you hear any scratching or howling in the background, we got some dogs here, and our dogs are going crazy in the background, which I think is kind of funny. All right, and green parsley. Now, you saw that took about 30 seconds, two minutes to make. It's just minutes. And now, we're done. Wouldn't you feel proud serving that to somebody? Now, I'm gonna take a little bite. Pardon me, but I gots to. Mm. You know what, I want to get a little polenta on there. Dig down in there. Mmm! 
Oh, golly. I might have to take the rest of the day off. That is absolutely, absolutely incredible. Mm. Oh my gosh. That is incredible. So here we have a very low effort, inexpensive, excellent meal for two or four if you just add two more chops to it. Now this is great and it's something that complements everything. One last thing, the Vitaclay has a timer. Since it's insulated, you can feel completely safe putting this together in the morning, say early on a weekend day and set the timer so it starts cooking five hours from now and it'll switch to a warming mode for several hours after the cooking cycle's complete. So you have ease, versatility, and an incredibly beautiful, delicious, elegant meal. Make a decision to jump onto our next cooking installment or go to the page and use my promo code to get $100 off this incredible cooking tool, which is a huge savings and a bundle of free gifts you'll use and love. Thanks for watching. Bye now. All right, welcome back. By now, you're probably familiar with the Vitaclay Chef and you've probably seen a lot of its versatility, but today I'm gonna to share my secret to perfect ribs. Now, you can do this with any type of ribs. I like the smaller ribs because they have a lot of meat on them and because they bend nicely inside the Vitaclay. Now, this is important. This is the simplest trick in the book. You take the ribs and you just bend them around inside the Vitaclay with the bone facing out. You can hear I already have that Vitaclay heated up a little bit. Now, the heat is gonna conduct through the bones into the rib from the inside, forcing all that goodness from the bones and the heat to release through the meat, which will make them fall off the bone. When I take these out, you're gonna see I'm gonna need to use tongs because they are absolutely tender as heck. Okay, so in, inside of that, oh, barbecue sauce. A little sauce inside the rib. And this is just a commercial barbecue sauce I'm using. And now things are gonna get slick. One of my favorite shortcuts is Zatarain's dirty rice. Zatarain's right in the middle of the ribs. And then, ah, what's a barbecue without a beer? It's gonna be fantastic. Crack a beer. I'd take a swig, but I don't wanna upset anybody. And boom. We got a beer barbecue rolling. That's it. Close it, and I've got that set for two hours. Now, in this other bite of clay, I'll show you in a minute, I've got beef ribs going with Asian rice. It's gonna be fantastic. All right, so we did barbecue ribs, and I told you I was gonna do something special as well. Well, let's start over here. Get that baby open, and some steam coming out. Well, these lids can get hot, so you don't want to burn your fingers. And the bite clay comes with this tool to make sure that you don't. Oh my golly. Now, I bet when I put those ribs in there, you were going, is this really going to work? Oh, it smells so good. Check a look. Check that out. You see in there? Barbecue ribs with the rice. I'm going to serve this up. First, I'm just going to get a lump of that Zatarans. There's that dirty rice, a little bit of barbecue sauce on the side. See how that dirty rice just cooked up perfectly in there? I know, it's surprising. Then ribs. Look at this, just twist them right off the bone. Barbecue ribs right there. Now you can heat up a little sauce if you like and put that on top, but you've got beautiful pork barbecued ribs. Look at that, the bone is clean. See how clean that bone is? I, well, I, I'm, I'm gonna do it because I can't. Never trust a skinny chef. Mm. Damn, that's good. Mm. Well done. Oh, that's juicy and delicious. So, this bad boy, open up. And this we did Hawaiian ribs, so there's a lot of sugar, and these are beef. So it's a kind of a teriyaki. Oh, you can hear that sizzle in there. Oh, and we did a fried rice in the middle. So we, all we did was do the same thing with rice on this side, and we added frozen peas and carrots to the rice and let the sauce 
from the barbecue, from the Asian marinade, just sink right in there. And again, let's get this spoon. We'll get some of this fried rice out of here. You'll see on the side, there's a little bit of that teriyaki sauce. You can hear it. Let me turn it off. All right. Mm, that rice is good too. And then, oh, look at that. Asian beef ribs. And again, the secret to this was making sure that the ribs, look at that, clean bone. Look at that. Is that the ribs are on the, the bone touches the side of the pan. That's what makes it cook through the bone and make that meat fall off just like that. I'm sorry, I gotta taste it all. It's part of the game. Here's the thing I want you to notice. As a guy who made infomercials my entire life, we've had large crews, lots of food stylists. There's a lot of, I'm gonna say a lot of theater that went into the, the we got a cooker going off. A lot of theater that went into pr the production. There's been zero theater with what you've seen here today. All of these are fresh out of the pot for you. Toasted sesame seeds, those ribs. This is as it appears. Delicious, healthy, this fast, this good, this simple. Anybody can cook like your grandma now with a Vita Clay. So follow the link. Get your own Vita Clay from us right now, and you'll be thrilled to have this amazing, time saving, space saving, cleanup saving tool in your home that you will use all the time, like I do mine. Thanks for watching. pasta. Here we have meatballs. Now you can make your own meatballs by scratch if you want to. It just takes a few minutes with ground pork and beef. I have gone to where now I go into the meat department because they make these at the meat department already done and they're actually pretty good. So I'm just going to put a little bit of olive oil in the bottom of the Vita Clay so that the meatballs don't stick. Then add the meatballs. It's a lot of meatballs. All right, now I'm gonna do the unthinkable here. I'm gonna put pasta right on top of this, which I know that seems a little screwball, but it actually works. Then I'm going to add two cups of water, which is enough to get that pasta soft, and a cup of red wine. That's delightful. And then I am actually you're probably having a heart attack seeing that I'm using a canned sauce, but if you think about what a canned sauce is, it's made fresh next to the field in a factory, yes, but kind of like your grandmother did. They flash cook this, these tomatoes. What I look for in it, and this honestly is one of my favorites, and it's one of the cheapest ones you can buy. Hunts, and no, they don't sponsor this show, but it doesn't have a lot of sugar in it, and it's basically herbs, spices, tomatoes, and it's gonna go right on top of there and that's gonna cook into the pasta. Then the, the last tip I have for you is spices. I always like to add a little more spice so that I add either Italian seasoning or I add herbs de Provence. Now, if you buy spices at the grocery store, you're getting hammered on the price. I go to Cost Plus or World Market because they sell big bags of spices, super cheap, and it's worth the drive to do that once a month. The only exception is if your grocery has a bulk spice and a bulk food department, you may get a decent deal there. But this is actually Italian seasoning and I like seasoning in my sauce. So that's it. Now you're probably thinking, oh my God, that's not very Italian. I'm not, taught, I, I'm not trying to be an authentic Italian. I'm trying to make dinner for your family. And my family, there's two of us at home now. We have three kids, the kids are grown. Sometimes they eat with us, sometimes they don't. But any of the recipes that are on this program or in the book, just cut them in half. There's two of you. It's not a big deal. All right, now remember we did meatballs and I put the meatballs in the bottom of the pot. I said we, could, we were also gonna do Swedish meatballs. For those, I put the meatballs in the top. Now wait till you see this. This is gonna be great. Okay, first of all, let's do the meatballs. The Italian meatballs. Ready? Boom. Ooh steam come off. Set this lid down this way and you really want to, I'm going to put it on a cutting board. 
You don't want to take a hot ceramic object and put it on this marble countertop, which is a cold ceramic object, right? Because that'll crack it. You don't want to expand or contract any kind of pot too fast, particularly if it's clay. You want to take good care of these pots. And by the way, you can order extra pots. Oh, all right, I'm gonna bust this up a little bit with that. Oh, there we go. Oh, meatballs are already rising to the top. This is fantastic. All right, so I just loosened it up a little bit there with my tongs. And it smells so good. Oh, boom. Take out pasta. You can see those meatballs rolling around there. Look at that. Now, who wouldn't want to come home to this? You set the timer, maybe in the morning, maybe on a Saturday, and you go out and you don't do anything. And look, we, we created no mess, no dishes. Just one pot, super easy. Yeah, you can make your own meatballs. I'm fine with that. This could be a vegetarian dish. I'm fine with that. You make it the way that you want to make it, but you make it easy with low effort. There must be a hundred meatballs in this thing. Low effort and super simple. Look at that. Okay, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna give you a little parsley on there. Just, you know, just kind of doctor it up for those folks who are about to get this. Oh, now wouldn't you feel good feeding your family that? See, anybody can cook. If I can do it, anybody can cook. I never went to chef school, I'm a grocer. I'm a grocer that got lucky and ended up making infomercials because we had demonstration kitchens in our store. And they turned me into an infomercial producer. Look at these Swedish meatballs! Shazam! Oh my God! Can you hear that bubbling? You hear that sound? Okay, so I'm gonna switch here. I'm gonna wipe these off because I really kind of want it to look nice for you. I'm gonna wipe this up. Sorry, that's what happens. We can make more rags. That's not a big deal. Those are washable. All right, we're gonna get into here. Look at this. Mm. The meatballs are on top. Look at how simple this is. Oh, that was easier to put together than Ikea furniture. Tell me, and it was homemade. Fantastic. Meatballs right there. Oh. I can't get enough of this. Who wouldn't be thrilled to have that plate hit the dinner table in front of them? Now this is important. Food is love. It's the fuel of your life and you need to give yourself and the people around you good, wholesome love, not fast food, junk love three times a week. You'll be able to simply fire up this bad boy, throw in some ingredients and sit and have Netflix and chill and have awesome, flavorful meals that you created. No more pizza trucks, just good food made with love, with no mess, all right? Go to the website, get your Vitaclay with my sexy promo code, be good. All right, bye now. Today's Tuesday, which makes it Taco Tuesday, and I love these dishes because they take about 60 seconds to prepare. And I'm gonna do two different types of street tacos really easily. Over here, we're gonna do pork, and over here, we're gonna do chicken. And this is all it takes. First, just add a little olive oil to the pot. It's just so the meat doesn't stick. And we're gonna throw. Now, I like pork with bone in it because we're gonna reserve the bone and the juices that come off of these street tacos after we drain them when we're done. And we're gonna make bone broth out of both of these. And obviously you can do this with beef as well. Now, I'm conscious about cross-contamination, even though here I probably don't need to be because these are gonna be heated up and cooked later, but I'm kind of, chicken kind of freaks me out when it's raw and when it's on the bone, but I'm sure you're probably not that much different. I try to make the bone side contact the outside of the Vita Clay pot, the clay pot, so that that connection is always cooking through the bone and cooking the bone to heat the meat right off the bone. Rinse a little bit there. Again, I get weird about this. Uh, Rotel, I love Rotel because it is one of the simplest pepper, chili, tomato combinations. 
I sometimes put two cans in each one of these. I'm just putting one in these. And here are two little cups of water. They're about, each about a pint of water. And I put a little sea salt in there. Salt water is the secret. Salt water's my liquid there. Salt water's my liquid there. And then taco seasoning. And I'd be generous with this because this is gonna give it its flavor and don't panic like, oh my gosh, I put too much in there. We put all that water in there and this is gonna diffuse throughout the flavors. This is really gonna give it a solid, it's gonna make the house smell fantastic, by the way. You're gonna, you're gonna walk in the house after this is cooking and go, my God, it smells fantastic in here. Now you can do this in the morning and let these cook all day and it'll stay warm and they will be falling off the bone. I buy hot sauce by the vat because it is good and good for you. And this is gonna add more heat and flavor to it. And it's not gonna be bitter hot. It's gonna be nice and warm hot. Like when you go to the Mexican restaurant and it's like, oh wow, how do they do this? Pretty sure this is how they do this. And garlic and garlic. Now you'll notice I didn't put the spoon in the container till after I mixed it in. I don't want the meat to touch the container. There, throw the spoon in the sink. And put the lid on. And we're gonna set these to cook each for two hours, low and slow. And when we open these up, they'll be falling off the bone and ready to make street tacos. Now, I wanna share something with you. If you've watched this video series, you're probably thinking, gee, Ron, that's, you've, you've used a lot of dishes, you've made a lot of messes. I wanna show you something that's quite astonishing because we're making all, a lot of these videos in series today. And this is the totality of our dishes for all 10 recipes that we've made thus far. That's it. That's all the mess I've got in the kitchen and I've just got a bite of clay pot to rinse and to clean. So basically we're gonna end up here with our first meal, which is street tacos. And we're gonna get a second meal out of this as well. And in fact, out of one of these, we're gonna get a third meal. So this is a very efficient and a very affordable way to make delicious, fantastic home cooking for your family. And we're back. Now that's it. You just tell people to grab a plate, right? Here is our shredded pork and our shredded chicken. Now I'm gonna, these are hot. Oh, that's hot. But I really want you to see what's inside here. So let me, Take the lid off. Oh, wow. I wish you could smell this. This pork is, mm. Oh, there's that. All right, here we go. Here we go. And what do we do first? Let's do this one. Okay. Now, normally, that's pork. Look at that. Normally in a crock pot, this takes two or three days to get this right carnitas for shredded beef. But look at that. I don't even need a fork to shred it. It's just falling apart. The problem with a pressure cooker, and anybody who owns a pressure cooker can relate to this. You do this in a pressure cooker, and as though it'll, even though it'll shred, it'll come out tough. You can get dry in a pressure cooker. This obviously is soaking wet and gonna be so delicious. I'll get some chicken out here. I'll get this chicken. Now, when they say chicken off the bone, I believe that I left most of the bone in the pot. It actually, that's the chicken breast. And you can see, look at that. I can shred it with the tongs. There's a chicken thigh. Let's pick up the bone. That's the bone out of the thigh, just like that. Boom. So that's actually something to be cognizant of here. And you notice I'm throwing the bones back in the pot because you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep this broth back here and it's gonna be bone broth that I'm going to turn into yet another meal. Oh my. That chicken there. Bone back in the pot. There's a loose bone there back in the pot. Now I've got an entire chicken in here and that's only part of it there. So you can see the quantity the other thing you could do with this, you can make a second meal instantly, is we have street tacos we're gonna make here. This could turn into tortilla soup 
with just a few ingredients, you can put the lid back on it and the next day you'd have tortilla soup. And that's a tradition at our house is, and it's a little related to the Day of the Dead, is we do a tortilla soup every Halloween. My wife makes that. Um, I don't know if everybody here in Texas does that, but that's a, that's a trait we picked up while we were here. Okay, so now pull that apart, shred that chicken. Here, use this fork. I, I can't just stand here and look at this and shred this chicken. I gotta taste it. All right, I'm mean, going in. Mm. That is so soaking wet moist to the core. It melts in your mouth. Mm. Oh my God. Right? And pull that apart. Yeah, I'm gonna do that too. I'm in. Oh my God, I can't resist. I gotta give this, I gotta stop for a second. Keep rolling. Arrows, step around here. Come in here, you gotta taste this. So everybody thinks everything on TV is fake. Good catch. Tell them what you think. That's really good. That's sick, isn't it? It's amazing. Sam, you wanna try one? Sure. Come here. You wanna try the chicken or you wanna try the pork? Let's go for the pork. All right. And? Oh, tell me. That's really good. Isn't that just melt in your mouth? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. That's going crazy with the forks and the food. All right, so let's make some tacos real quick. Nobody is disappointed with a good street taco. Let's put a little pork on that one. And pork back there on that one. I had some more. Woo, it's hot. It's hot in the fingers. And what you're seeing on the counter here, you saw what we put in the, the pot to begin with. Our yield is still in there. I've only got about 50% of the meat here. And we're gonna do something special with what's left of that pork meat here in a little bit. But you have people over, you say, hey, I made a pot of shredded chicken or shredded pork and boom, come make your own tacos. Everybody can make their own street tacos. And this goes a long ways. This is a, this is a meal for about, one of these pots is probably a meal for 10 or 12 people, which means you're gonna have enough shredded chicken or pork left over to make other dishes out of during the week. So let me add a little pico there, a little chopped produce. You see I got a little avocado on there. And you can see I've got cilantro, and cilantro is kind of a weird thing. People have a gene in them with cilantro that they either love it or they hate it. To some people, it tastes like soap. It's actually genetic. Some people love it, some people hate it. So I put it on the side so people can choose. And a little coheta cheese, I tend to buy mine pre-crumbled. You can crumble it yourself though, not a big deal. A little green onion. Onion and Boom, that's all it takes. That's the entire effort. Beautiful garnish. And you're winning street tacos, just like that. Not bad, huh? All right, that's it, no dishes. Tell people to grab a plate, make their own taco, and go sit out on the patio, crack a beer, and live your life like a hero. You really just made the best street tacos of your life in about 60 seconds up front. You see, the perfect pressure and even heating play are the secret to a natural, healthy, tender meat that's saturated with those sweet flavors. You can do this, you'll love it, yet you can only do it with a Vita clay. That's why mine's 10 years old with dents and dings, and I use it, I love it, and so will you. Click to get my personal deal and enjoy $100 off today. And Vitaclay will send you a bunch of free gifts and they'll pay your shipping. What more do you want? Order your Vitaclay now. All right, welcome back. So a few episodes ago, you probably recall we made shredded street tacos out of pork and out of chicken. 
which were both awesome. And we had visions of taking that pork and making one pot enchiladas for you. Well, guess what? I think you saw the crew eating that meat. When we turned the cameras off, that pork was devastated immediately by the crew. They ate all of it. So we do have some of the chicken left. So this is about 50% of the chicken. So we just switched. We're gonna make a chicken enchilada now. Let me show you how to make a stacked chicken enchilada in the Vitaclay. It's very simple. A little olive oil in the bottom just to make sure that my tortillas don't stick. Now I'm a corn guy and enchiladas are traditionally made with corn. Tacos are made with corn or flour. So there goes, there's my base right there. That's it. Then on top, I'm going to put a little bit of cheese because cheese is the glue that sticks everything together. Then a little bit of chicken, a little bit of onion. Then we just repeat tortillas, little cheese to glue it together, little protein on top. See, when I say this is an easy process for anybody to master, it really is. It does not take long. If you can spend, and you can time this, this is only gonna be a few minutes that we're gonna spend doing this, and we're gonna have a complete meal. In fact, I'm gonna start doubling up on the enchilada, on the uh, tortillas here. Okay, now you've seen the quantity that went in there. So you know we got enough for an entire family. And I have a family. We have three, three kids, there's five of us total. And we try to eat together a couple times a week even though the kids are grown. And this is a favorite and it's super simple, super quick, anybody can do this. And now here goes that enchilada sauce and we just saturate. The whole enchilada. And that's gonna soak down as the Vita Clay heats up. This is almost like making a lasagna and putting the sauce on it. It's kind of the same process, or as my Canadian friends would say, the same process. And a little cheese on top. And a little more cheese on top. Now that was actually a big chunk of cheese grated was not a full pound, it was about three quarters of a pound. Onions on top. And there we have a one pot enchilada. The other thing I wanted to show you, we've thus far kind of worked on having the Vitaclay do entirely everything in the machine. I want you to show you that this pot definitely comes out. You can absolutely assemble anything in the pot. You can store in the pot and they sell extra pots that you can buy online. Um, I have to myself because I do sweet things and I do savory things. And because it's a porous material, the Vita Clay will drink up and it'll retain a flavor eventually of either being sweet or savory. And I like mine to have a savory flavor for one. And if I do puddings or bread puddings or yogurts, I wanna have a sweet pot as well. Great news is they both store in the fridge so your leftovers can be stored. And this travels magnificently. So we put the lid on and you can see in the lid, there's those three holes that vent and the sauce will actually thicken while it cooks. And we put her in and I'm gonna plug it in. It's not plugged in. And lid on and I'm gonna come around. I'm gonna set this to slow cook, stew. All right, these enchiladas have been cooking for just 30 minutes and you saw how quick it was to assemble it's, it feels like a complex meal when you get it done but it's so simple when you know how to do it and you have the right tool here we go can you hear that bubbling nice huh oh man that smells so killer i gotta make sure i get a fork on this side because as i serve this up i know i'm gonna want a bite of it so here is the trick. I'm gonna take a knife, put my knife down inside the enchilada and cut it almost like a pizza, like right across. Boom. And boom. Now I can feel that bottom enchilada and it's acting like a pad so I don't scratch the surface of the bottom. And we're in good shape. Now, 
Watch as we bring this up. Now it's going to be messy, but boy, is it going to be worth it. Get this plate in here nice and tight. And enchilada meat. Oh, baby, look at that. Beautiful. Let's cut another one. Let's cut another enchilada. Nice. on a platter. If you like platters. All right. You can do it in a bowl too. Let's slide the bowl out of the way. Bring those in. Bring that in. Now you got space for it. Your beans on the side if you like. Whatever your side dish is. Little green onions on top. And the pico on top. And again, you don't have to be a cilantro person, but some people are cilantro people. So I'll tell you what. I'll put cilantro on one of these and not on the other one. So there's a little garnish, and then polish it off with some fresh cojita. And that took five minutes to assemble, 30 minutes to cook, and you saw it took me about 90 seconds to plate. And would you be ashamed to serve that to somebody? I don't think so. Enchiladas are fantastic. They're hearty, they're warm, and I only, that's two servings. There's still six more servings in this pot. That'd make a great leftover for lunch as well. And if you want to store that, you take your pot out and you let it cool. Do not put it on a marble countertop or a hard countertop that's ceramic because this pot is extremely warm right now. I'm putting it on wood so that it can cool off. Once it cools off, I can refrigerate it. So there you go, enchiladas. Now, these are fabulous one pot meals that you can make instantly for your family with less work, more ease, and efficiently. Very low cost meals. To learn more, order your own with $100 off today with all the accessories that they give you from Vitaclay. You are going to absolutely love your Vitaclay chef. Welcome back to Vitaclay. This is one of my favorite products in my house because I use it all the time. And you've seen me cook a lot of hearty foods and dishes with it, but I'm gonna do some things that are unusual now. This is kind of a late night thing that I do. These are my overnight specialties with Vitaclay. When I was a kid and I grew up in Seattle, we used to go out to Marysville and pick strawberries. And my mom would make strawberry jam. And so I'm gonna show you how to make overnight strawberry jam. And this is like the best gift you can give somebody. When you go to their house, you bring a pint of fresh strawberry jam and they're gonna thank you forever. So I actually have another appliance in my house, a blender. And I'm gonna show you how I do this. This is a um, stevia, stevia plant, non-sugar. I like to limit my sugar, although I'm about to use one in another recipe, but a little bit of stevia, which is a natural plant sweetener. And these strawberries are Honestly, I got them at the store frozen because it's not strawberry season, but if they were fresh picked, you could do this with fresh strawberries very simply. And this is pectin. And just a little bit of pectin goes in, a little bit of lemon juice. Okay, so I'm reserving about 50% of this because in this bowl, the other half of the strawberries are. We're gonna do this twice real quick, okay? Here we go, here goes the first time and we'll just That's it, because we want a lumpy jam. We want our jam to be good. So just a little pulse there, and we've got strawberry jam. It's gonna go. I love baking biscuits and Southern food. To me, biscuits and toast and scones, they're all just a delivery system for things like honey and jam in my life. I don't know about you, but here we go. Here's just strawberries going in. Perfect. And I get a little bit of messy sometimes, but I don't mind being messy. It's better to be messy and good. So then let's put the rest of the pectin in there and the rest of the sweetener and a little squirt more of lemon juice for that half. A little acid in there. Now the amazing thing is this is gonna set up beautifully It's all right if there's a little bit of lump in that pectin. It'll be, it'll come out here when we pour it in. It'll mix in nicely and boom, there's the other half. So that Vitaclay is almost full and that is gonna make about eight pints 
of strawberry jam or 16 half pints. So there it is in there. We'll cover that up. We'll put it in the Vita Clay in a minute, but I want to show you my second overnight secret. I love, it might be because I'm Irish, to wake up to hot oats in the morning. So here's my second secret. Two cups of oats, milk. We'll do it two to one. If you put in two cups of oats, just kind of like you're cooking rice, put in four cups of milk. Now you can use soy milk or oat milk or other kinds of milk if, if you are in fact lactose intolerant. And I tease people for that, but I really mean it. If I don't want anybody getting sick, then I add a little bit of cinnamon and just a little bit of sugar. And I forgot something that I wanted to add. Here it is. I love these dried cranberries. Mm. Put the dried cranberries in at this point. Okay, and then just a little touch of vanilla. And this little touch of vanilla kind of makes the difference in the whole thing. And boy, you're gonna love to wake up to this aroma in the house, the smell of these cinnamon and oats and vanilla. Oh my gosh, it's like waking up to Christmas. So I just mix that up and that's gonna be a delicious porridge in the morning. Lid goes on that. Now I'm gonna do one of the weirder things that you've ever seen me do. I'm going to make yogurt. This is a Bulgarian yogurt. It's got a live culture in it. You wanna get a live yogurt. You just don't wanna get your regular pasteurized yogurt. You want a live yogurt. Watch this nonsense. I'm gonna take the rest of this whole milk and I'm gonna pour milk. And I'm filling the Vita Clay about 50%, okay? So there's about two quarts of milk in there. And now this jar costs about $3. This milk costs about $3. I'm going to turn one of these into one of these, this simply. Just a touch more. That's it. That's the recipe for making yogurt. That live cultures in this overnight in the Vita Clay will turn that milk into yogurt. Let me grab a lid. And what setting will you use to make yogurt? Your Vita Clay has a yogurt setting. This is amazing. I, I never thought that I could make or even really wanted to make my own yogurt, but once you do this once, imagine taking a touch of this fresh yogurt in the morning and adding a touch of that stra strawberry jam to it. Holy smokes. All right, good morning, right? Overnight, we did oats and jam, and we did yogurt. Check this out. First of all, our homemade jam. Ooh, it's bubbling through the lid. Now it cooked for just two hours low, and then it stayed warm all evening long. You can see the steam coming off of that. Doesn't that look fabulous? Ugh. Okay, this is a gift you're gonna give somebody, bring to their house, and they're never gonna forget you. Okay, it's a little soupy at the moment, but this is gonna set up in the freezer, because it's a freezer jam. So let's get a ladle in there. Strawberries and pectin. Once this cools down, we'll show you an after of it cool as well. But I just want you to see how beautiful, oh, smells so good. I'm gonna do one more, then we'll go on to the oats. I want you to see the quantity you get out of here. So there is two pints right there. Mm. Oh, that's hot. Two pints of freezer jam right there. And I barely put a dent in that. There's another six. We'll be able to fill, easily fill all of these containers. And I'll probably fill a jam jar so we'll have one at home later for us. But that strawberry jam, and it'll set up nicely in the freezer and it'll be nice and thick. Put the lid on there. Now you go to somebody's house, you bring that as a gift, they will never forget you. That is a lifelong friend you just made with strawberry jam. Let me put the lid back on this. We'll come back to that and I'll unload the rest of that later. Now, our breakfast oats. And man, I can tell you already, I can smell the cinnamon in there. This is fantastic. Oh, boom. 
Do you know what? I'm gonna, Eros, do you think you can get over here and get this overhead real quick so you can see what it looks like? We're gonna ask the cameraman to break frame and come in and take a look at this because I want you to be able to see how these oats turned out. Do you need a light to see in there? Yes, please. I have a studio light right here, a little portable one. Let me lift that up for you. That, how's that? Nice and bubbling. And then let's see if I can do two things at once. Stir those. Oh, look at that. Oats there. And look at how beautiful that is. Right into the bowl. Now, that's Christmas morning for somebody. Speaking of, this Vitaclay makes an awesome gift. If you're watching these videos and you go, I'd really like one of these, you know what? People love to give people gifts they love. If there's somebody in your life that you know loves you, but they never know what to get you, send them this video. Say, I like a Vitaclay. And this Christmas, this Hanukkah, this Kwanzaa, whatever you celebrate, mm, you can get your own Vitaclay as a gift. And you'll wake up to a fantastic breakfast and be able to cook every day, save money, give your family incredible nutritious foods that you will love. And the miracle of overnight yogurt. Look at this. Okay, now you remember we started here with a little bit of whole milk and we added about two tablespoons of yogurt and look at this. I'll make sure you can see this. Hold on a second. See how that's set up there? We have legit yogurt right there. Look at that nonsense. Steamy, creamy, nice and cool and delicious. Now it's time for you to make the brilliant decision I made 10 years ago. Get yourself your own Vitaclay. The offer's amazing. The value is incredible, and you'll be cooking like grandma and making everyone happy with no cleanup. Yes, you'll get the full recipe book, complete with everything you've seen and more. You'll also get access to all of our videos. This is amazing, delicious, and fun. Order your Vitaclay now and give up the dishes while you make things delicious. Thanks for watching. I'll make more videos in the future. If you like them and share them, I'm happy to do that. Order and enjoy your Vitaclay with this incredible discount and all the free gifts. Thanks for watching. Bye now.